Shalom everyone. Yahweh Shmartha and Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of I Art Jazzy. Today I will be showing you a step-by-step -step at how to create a charcoal portrait. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and that way you are alerted whenever I upload a new video. So yeah. Let's get to it. All right, before you get started, you want to make sure that your hands are thoroughly clean. The oils that come onto your fingertips, they can transfer onto the paper and it's going to show. It's gonna be a big old <laughs> fingerprint onto your camera. So be sure to wash your hands first. Next, what you're going to do is that you're going to take vine charcoal or you can use just loose powder charcoal and you're going to coat your entire paper with it. Just smear it around. It doesn't matter if it ends up flat or whatever. You just need to smear it around. And then you are going to take a just a regular cotton ball and you're going to use it to smear the vine charcoal that you had applied onto the paper. This will allow your paper to have its mid-tone and then from there you add your shadows and your and your highlights to it. After you have applied the vine charcoal all and spread it around from there you are going to take your vine charcoal again and you're going to begin to sketch it. There are three different methods that you can choose from, but that's for another video. After you have sketched on your picture from there, you are going to begin to add the darkest shadows. We're still using our vine charcoal. We're still using that. Nothing is permanent. Don't touch any pencils, okay? The charcoal pencils are very permanent. Just use the vine charcoal. You want to start with your darkest shadow and then work up to the ones that end up in between uh, your paper color and the and your darkest shadows. From there, you're going to add your highlights. Your highlights can be added on by just taking either a clean cotton ball, Q-tip, or tissue paper just to go up one level. But we are going to start off with our brightest brights. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take a normal eraser and use that to create your lightest areas. This is the eraser that I use, or if your eraser is another color, it honestly doesn't matter as long as it doesn't leave a residue. One way to test it is you're going to take your eraser and just erase on a regular sheet of paper. If it leaves a residue, don't use it. The best erasers for dealing with this sort of work whenever it comes to a dry medium is to use one of those it's like a malleable eraser like if, if the texture is like like putty or like gum and you can mold it to whatever shape it is that you need to or let's say you need it to come to a nice fine point you can do that with that malleable eraser especially for dry mediums if not you could just use a regular eraser make sure you get the nice soft ones those hard erasers are from the devil and we don't want to use that because it's gonna ruin everything so be sure to get a nice soft eraser but the malleable but the malleable ones are the best From there, you're going to add those in-between shades of your darker shades and go from there. If you have applied too much, you can take a cotton ball or you can take a Q-tip for those tight spaces in your piece. I find that those weird paper pencils it is that they give in charcoal pencil packages are useless. Like there's not much that you could really do with it. It's, it's helpful for those super 
tight corners that you want to get into but aside from that like it's it's purposeless like I don't use it I never have I never will um yeah I just for those super tight corners I just use the 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 tissue paper and I roll it into a nice fine point and I just use it from there like I'm not gonna waste my time or money on that like I just don't see a point From there, what you're going to do is that you are going, what I find, and what as far as what, what I do, is you're going to take a workable fixative and you're going to spray down your piece. What this does is that it helps keep what you have already posted on there, whatever it is that you have already drawn there, and it makes it a little less malleable. That way, if you accidentally take something up, then you're fine. If that is a little too permanent too soon, then just skip that step. What I have a tendency to find is that there, there are sharpeners for charcoal pencils, for those thicker ones, but what works for me is that I just take an X-Acto knife and I just shave it off. I got that technique from my Uncle Larry and I love him ever so dearly. <laughs> so it does run in the family, so yeah. After that, then you are going to start adding your charcoal pencils. What I tend to do is I start with my darkest pencil first and I add to those darkest areas to make them pop and I work my way up from my from that up until like my mid-tone and I just go from there. Um, I start with my dark charcoal pencil, then I work with my medium, then I work with my light charcoal pencil.
Next, I'm going to be working on my lighter area. So I'm going to take my white charcoal pencil and I'm going to add to those. If it is too apparent to the naked eye, I just take a, you and you have to do this. You're going to take a clean Q-tip, cotton ball or whatever kind of paper you are using, and you're going to blend it out from there. From there, I just go back and forth in adding those highlights and low lights and small details, and I just add those finishing touches. All right, well, there you have it. There's your step-by-step -step instruction and how to create a charcoal portrait. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Again, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You know you wanna be a part of this I Art Jazzy family. You know you wanna be a part of it. It's cool, it's okay. I know I'm awesome. The most high made me this way. It's great. Go ahead and hit that notification bell. I will see you on the next one. Shalom. That includes you too. <laughs> this mic picks up everything. Well, cut it on silent then. Why you can't go outside? Because it's too close to the internet thing and it's gonna cause interference in the mic. I already tried that. Yeah, I didn't know about that. No, I'm just kidding. What's your back showing everybody? How should I register? I'm can I record? <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm kidding. You're gonna try to get me. Yes, you do, because you still got it in your hand. <laughs> Whatever. You should have told Just be lying.